Hi guys, Shane here with BeTheBowTieGuy.com. Going through our next post, uh, our next bow tie styling post here, really directed towards bow ties with suits. And uh, in my in my experience, one of the main reasons why again guys don't wear a bow tie because they don't know how to style it. And if you like drill down into that, well, they don't know how to style it with a suit, right? So that's that's probably one of the reasons. And and for guys who are already wearing bow ties, you know, sometimes they don't really know how to style it themselves. They kind of just throw it with a suit and they just kind of hope things hope for the best. And that's really what I wanted to to get into, just kind of drill down on what is good suit style. You know, when you rock a bow tie with a suit, what is some of the things you should be aware of? So that's that's pretty much the inspiration for the post. Uh, getting right into it. You know, again, suits for many men are, are second skin. When you put on a suit, you're making a statement. And when you don't wear, uh, when you don't wear a necktie with a suit, and you wear a bow tie. You're really making a statement. People are going to turn heads, and they're be like, "Man, that guy, you know, he looks good." Especially when you're rocking it well. A bow tie with a suit done well. Now that's that's something to you know be said about. Um, it, it really, it really, you know, sets the tone for for when you're you know meeting people. Man, this guy knows what he's doing. He's not just rocking a bow tie because I, I think a lot of people wear bow ties. And they just kind of assume that it makes them stylish, you know, like, oh, I'm going to put a bow tie on. I am, a, I am now stylish. I am, you know, taking my style game to the next level. When in reality, you're probably making a couple, a couple of mistakes that are easy to fix um, if you just kind of did the initial research. But I think some guys out there just, you know, kind of just do that. And it's just like, oh, man, no, don't make the bow tie look like that. Um, so hopefully this article will help those guys. If you know a guy out there like that, definitely forward them the link to this article. Um, so starting off with it, you know, always mind the rule of fit. There is no, that is the number one rule of fashion. Mind the rule of fit. Things should, you know, lines should be nice and clean. You shouldn't have bunching like this. Uh, you know, clearly the suit on the left here is a bad fit. So much, ex this suit is huge on me. It looks like my dad's suit. Uh, not a good fit at all. If you look at the one on the right, much more tailored fit you know, cleaner lines. It's just it's just what a suit, a suit should look like. It should drape over you. It should just create a nice silhouette. That is the goal. A couple of key things think uh, to, to mind here, the shoulder fit. You know, shoulders are perfectly fitting here. Like there's, it, you know, they just, they fall right at my shoulder blade and it, and it works. Uh, sleeve length, my shirt ends right at the base of my thumb there and it gives me about a quarter inch of, uh, of white, which one guy I really respect, uh, in his blog, he basically recommends to match the amount of sleeve you have with the amount of sleeve or shirt collar that is exposed to the top of, of top of your suit. So you have a lot of sleeve. If you don't have a lot of uh, sleeve here, this you know shirt exposed at the at your in your arm, then you shouldn't have a lot of shirt collar exposed either. But if you have you know a, a great amount of sleeve exposed down here then you should have more amount of collar exposed i just thought that was a good idea because again it's all about balance um and for me again i go pretty traditional quarter inch and that's that's pretty much it jacket length uh you know it really should just end right at the end of your butt it should just barely be covering the whole thing and you know any more than that probably too much you can also use the cupped fingers trick i've heard that doesn't always work so you know just be aware and have have somebody that really knows fit take a look at you um the thing about bow ties too, when you wear a bow tie, you're gonna create a lot more front space. Uh, you know, you call it front space, empty space, white space, whatever, whatever thing you want to call it, it exists when you wear a bow tie. If you wear a necktie, there's just more fabric covering your shirt, taking the taking the you know the focus off of your shirt and putting it on your tie. If you wear a bow tie, that there's a lot less fabric going on. Okay, especially you know a traditional. 2.5 inch, uh, you know, boat, butterfly bow tie. It's just not that much fabric, so you're going to have more of a focus on your shirt. Uh, so if you wear a loud shirt and an and acquired a bow tie, the shirt is going to be the focal point for sure. Not the same thing. That is not the same case for a necktie when you can wear more of a conservative shirt and, uh, or I should say, a more bold shirt and a conservative uh, necktie, and you can still have the necktie being the focal point. Not the same for a bow tie, in my opinion. Now. When you're uh, wearing a bow tie with a suit, you're gonna have that white space, and it's just something to be aware of, right? It's just it's there, and unless you want the shirt to be the focal point of the outfit, do something to cover it up. Now, I don't mean go out of your way to cover it up. I mean, you know, if it works and it's in your style, uh, to use maybe a, like a like a vest, as we'll get into, or uh, maybe a, maybe some kind of cardigan or something. If if it match, if it if it works for what you're doing now for staying on the suit thing here 
you could definitely e easily wear a vest here. You could wear a uh, sweater. Definitely could wear a sweater underneath this coat, and that would ex uh, remove a lot of this white space. Or there's a couple other things that you could do, and we'll, again, we're getting into those in a second. Just one thing I want you guys to really just be aware of is that white space. It's there. It's taking the focus off your bow tie, and just be aware of it. And we'll come back to a couple of those points in a minute. Suit canvassing. Basically, the, the gist here is a full. there's three types of suits that are made, uh, that I'm aware of at least, full canvas, half canvas, and fused. A full canvas suit basically has a uh, horse hair or potentially camel hair interlining here of the of the suit, and it is essentially built to give it shape uh, and really just sit in between the the shell of your suit and the uh, inter and inner lining, uh, and again give it shape. You know, keep it keep it that give it that drape over you so it looks nice. Uh, full canvas, obviously, it's very expensive and time-consuming to create, uh, so you're going to pay for it. You know, you're not going to get a cheap full canvas suit. If you do, it probably isn't um, It probably isn't that good of a suit, so I'd definitely be aware of that. If somebody's like, oh, this is full canvas, it only costs $200, then I'd be like, well, where are you getting this from? Benefits, it's going to mold to your body. A uh, full canvas suit is, is, you know, the whole point of canvas, it eventually kind of contours to you and it, it like fits you like a glove so to speak if you get really expensive shoes the same thing can be said the the shoe uh you know the base of the shoe it, it basically just molds to fit your foot same thing can be said about canvas uh, again it holds up the dry cleaning better uh it will last as long it will last longer as it distributes tension throughout your suit some of the points like the shoulder uh various points throughout it basically distribute, uh, just uh, distributes the tension throughout instead of uh, pinching and then you know just keeps the life of the suit longer that's why you have sometimes full canvas suits being passed down from dad to grandson to, you know whoever that's why usually now half canvas suit is basically taking uh, half the suit that's canvas and fusing it so you're getting half half the value here right instead of instead of a full canvas inner lining like we just discussed you're going to get half um, and now half, the other half is going to be fused. Now, when you're at, when you're sketching your hand, you're like, oh, wait, what does fused mean? Well, essentially, there is a, you know, a sort of a glue that holds the suit together to give it shape rather than a canvas. Uh, those cheap brands such as H&M, Zara, they heavily lean on that glue to reduce cost. You know, At the end of the day, if they want to sell as many suits as possible to, in the world, they need to do something to figure that out. And they have to scale. The only way they can do that and get suits at such a cost that you know people that don't have uh, crazy incomes can afford is to use certain measures to to reduce the cost. Now, not to say a few suit is a bad suit. It's gonna it has its its pros and cons like anything else. And going back to the half canvas, half of your suit is gonna be fused. Now, the top half, uh, depending on the brand, the manufacturer, and the creator of your suit, will have the lapel canvas and the shoulder and again. Up, back, up to the navel uh, of canvassing. Now that's a good thing because it's gonna basically uh, reap all the benefits of a canvas suit, uh, still mold to your body, give it that shape, that depth that you really want in a, in a, in a nice suit, but uh, it's gonna be cheaper. That's great, right? Less money is, is really good. Um, although you're gonna sacrifice the bottom half of your suit uh, into a fusing. Now that's not the end of the world. Again, the, the key points like the shoulder and various other tension points are being still distributed Things are are still, uh, you know, looking good. And I, honestly, I think unless you're, you're, you know, raking in the big bucks, I think half canvas suit should be where most people are at. That's where I'm at, per, uh, per, to be perfectly honest. And I and I think that's a good spot for a lot of folks that aren't, like, super high-end, you know, $1,000-plus suits. And that's probably where you're going to be for a full canvas suit, at least $1,000. Half canvas generally starts about $500. Uh, anything lower than $500, probably going to be fused. Now... Let's see, keeping rolling around here. You know, lifespan of a few suits, probably two to, two to three years. Again, one of the main detractors of a few suit, it, it kind of looks boxy. It looks like a few suit, usually you can tell. Uh, the lapels don't really have that bounce to them. They're, they're more flat, almost like you ironed them to your chest. And again, you can just see it. You can just see the difference when you're looking at a fused versus a canvas, so... Uh, now we're moving on to suit types. There's a couple. There's obviously there's you know there's a couple different suit types that exist out there. We're going to cover the, the you know the big ones. First being the bow tie with one button suit. 
Now, this is a more recent type of look. Uh, it has long, long lapels here, one button, obviously, and a deep, deep V. It's mostly a casual suit, but it's turning into a more of a formal suit. Not something I would recommend for beginner suit goers, just because one button suits probably more of like a fashion statement instead of a uh, work suit. And for bow tie wearers, I would not recommend it given the fact that it has a ton of this white space here. Now, if you're really trying to do some kind of fashion forward look here with maybe like a sweater vest with some cool like design, I don't know, and you really want to open up that window and make, give it some look, some viewing, then sure, by all means, drop, you know, go for the one button suit. But it's not a versatile suit. It's got a huge V uh, taking all the attention away from the bow ties you can see from this guy and putting it on a shirt. Even if he wore a white shirt, I hope he wouldn't wore, wore a white shirt with his white suit. It would look ridiculous. But if he did, uh, it, you know, it would, again, it'd be like this gaping hole in the middle of his chest. So not my favorite for a bow tie, but uh, it, it is out there if you want to go with it. Now, the second one is the bow tie with two button suit. Not a bad look. This is probably what you have in your closet right now. It is the uh, go to for a lot of folks out there. Now, is it go with a bow tie? My answer would be no, mainly because of the, the DV that still exists. A lot of attention is being drawn to the shirt. Not to say that I wouldn't wear it with a bow tie, because I do pretty regularly, actually. But the fact is, uh, you are going to not have an optimal situation. And what I'm trying to get at with this, ar this article is optimal situations. Just be aware of your options that exist in the world. Now, pretty much all retail outlets sell two-button suits. You will look at, you know, if you go to any department store, that's pretty much what they're going to sell, like, 99% of the time. And again, that's basically what the market demands, what people are getting. Again, going back to the thought is, well, you know, is it good with a bow tie? I would say it's it's probably okay to wear with a bow tie, given the fact it's such a good uh, suit from a utility perspective, because you can really wear it with anything. You know, it it's a suit that you could wear, a suit style you can wear anywhere. It, it has so much other application outside of just wearing it to work or, or whatever. You know, as a sport coat, whatever. There's a lot of different things you can do with a two-button suit that are, are kind of in line with fashion. Um, I also make a point that, you know, the two-button and the one-button suit have a long, long lapel here, and it makes for a great uh, heightening if you're a shorter dude. And that's okay. You know, if, if you're, you know, not the tallest guy in the world, the modest man, if you will, and... You know, that, that long lapel is going to really lengthen your torso. It's going to lengthen, make you look, you're not going to be taller, but it's going to make you look taller, appearance-wise. So just something to be aware of the effect. So if you're a bigger guy, look into that. Bow tie with three-button suit. Not Now, this three-button suit thing, it's it's pretty much out of style at this point, although this guy is killing it here, jo Joseph Gordon-Levitt, making the three-button suit look damn good. Um, although I still wouldn't recommend it because it's just such an old-fashioned style, three buttons, you could do it, and it could look pretty good, but again, I would just be aware of that. Now, I would just be aware of the fact that it, has, it reduces that V pretty significantly, so it puts all the focus on the bow tie, which is exactly the point of wearing one, right? Nine times out of ten, you're wearing a bow tie to be, to, you know, for the bow tie to be seen, and this is doing just that. So it does, definitely gets that goal accomplished, but again, the suit style itself is very out of style, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Although, again, if you're a taller guy, this might be a good suit option for you because it removes that long lapel. If you're already tall, you don't need something else making you look even more tall, so I would definitely consider consider that. Moving on to our next suit style, double-breasted suit. This is a great option, something I'd recommend. I would look into this if you have never purchased one. I recently started looking into getting a double-breasted suit, and mainly because it really it kills a lot of that extra white space, uh, frames the bow ties nicely, and it, it's just a good-looking suit. You know, it's, It is usually reserved for more formal occasions, and you will get uh, some looks because it's not something everybody wears. Again, everybody wears the two-button. This is a double-breasted. Only two of the buttons, uh, or the inside, I should say, the inside row of the buttons are, are real buttons. The rest are decorative. So these three right here are not real. They are decorative, just so you know. Uh, last suit style, the three-piece suit. Now, this is, again, something we mentioned earlier. The vest really reduces a lot of that white space, frames the bow tie nicely, and you look damn good. Now, have you ever heard of um, Doctor Who? He always wears a, be a vest, and, you know, who better of a role model to, to, to you know, model yourself after than Doctor Who? And he kills it in his style. And, again, this is exactly kind of how he wears it, you know, sans the uh, pocket watch. 
I would recommend three-piece suit, double-breasted suit, potentially three-button suit if you're a tall guy, and the two-button suit as your as your uh, workhorse suit. Those are my uh, recommendations. Single-breasted suit, those are traditional suits. Double-breasted, you know, again, it removes some of that white space. Definitely something to think about. Now, suit pants. Suit pants, there are two types that I'm, at least the two general types that exist out there, pleated and front, flat front. Flat front's more... Uh, you know, basically what's in style right now. Pleated is, is kind of old news. It's kind of what was in style maybe, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. It's probably what your dad has. And there's nothing, you know, they could look good if you had them tailored nicely. Um, but, you know, most most times flat front's the way to go. Uh, it'll flatter, flatter you a little bit more. It's a better cut. Uh, just something, you know, that's what I would recommend. The break, uh, so if you ever... Go to a tailor, and he asks you what break you want in your pants. Basically, you have four options. Full, uh, full break, half break, quarter break, and no break. I personally go for the no break. It looks more trendy. It's more European fashion forward style. Usually, you pair it with a tapered leg I, like I do. I just like that look. I think um, a lot of people are going with that. It shows a little sock, a little flare. Uh, if you don't want to do that, and, you're again, you're, you're more of a conservative bow tie guy, totally fair, totally honest, I would recommend quarter break. Uh, for that, for that, for the reason being, basically, it's it's an in between between no break and half. Half isn't bad either. I mean, really, quarter and half are pretty much in the same boat. Full break, I don't know about that. It, lo- it just looks really, um, you know, disheveled, very old man kind of look. Not again, not to say it's a terrible look. I personally wouldn't do it because it breaks up all the kind. All these lines are just broken up by all this extra fabric. I don't really see the, uh, the thought there. Even half break has a lot of break, but it, it, it's. It's okay. Um, I'd recommend quarter or no break. That, those are my options. If, if you're rocking a bow tie with a suit and you want to stay thing, keep things clean, keep lines nice and tight, clean break, no break are my thoughts. Pant rise, basically, you know, talking crotch here, where where that uh, waistband ends up. A couple of rules of thumb here. It doesn't really matter for bow tie wearers. I, you know, pant rise in general, it's just something to know. If you have a long torso, consider high rise pants. Uh, to give the appearance that you have a long, longer legs and more proportioned body. If you have, you have longer legs, you don't necessarily want a longer torso either. So maybe you know low-rise pants to make your torso look longer. So essentially, it, the low-rise, high-rise, mid-rise, it just, it just basically says where is my pants going to sit? Is it going to sit uh, at my hips? Is it going to sit at my navel? That pretty much uh, is, is the is the long the short of the of the uh, the pant rise situation low rise pants generally your hips um you'll find a lot of jean styles like that high rise uh, again closer to your match your natural waist suit colors and bow ties again a lot of people don't know about color coordination they kind of just use their gut and that's fine i think that's totally okay i think again you know most suits are neutral colors and you can really pair anything with anything truly um but if you know covering the basics here, black tie with a bow, bow tie, black suit I should say with a bow tie. Most suits are um, let's see here, black suit with a bow tie. Now, anytime you're wearing a bow tie with a suit, that's a black suit I should say. It's probably for a formal event. You don't necessarily have to only wear uh, a black bow tie with a black suit. I actually kind of like. I'm starting to like more the the idea of navy. Um, with black or even, uh, you know, like a deep burgundy. I think personally, I really am digging like a, like the burgundy, the reds. If you're going to wear a bow tie with a black suit right off the bat, just, just, you could do it with colors. Just keep it in the same shade. You know, I wouldn't recommend like a bright, uh, jarring, like yellow or pink with a black suit. It's not something you can't do. I just wouldn't recommend it just because there's two completely different sides of the spectrum of color. Uh, if you want to go splash a little color, maybe as like a lapel pin for an accent, like kind of like how our guy here is doing, it's just kind of like accenting, add a little more style, but most of his other colors are, are kind of darker, neutral shades, if you will. If you're going to wear a bow tie with a charcoal suit, I would recommend burgundy, quite honestly. I, burgundy is my favorite color, so if you hear me going burgundy a lot, it's it's pretty much because I love, I love the color. It just goes with everything nicely. And in our, in our uh, picture here, you can see that we have a burgundy bow tie going on with a charcoal suit. It looks good. I just think they complement each other nicely. Truthfully, though, charcoal is a neutral color. It will go with anything. You could par- you could pair a charcoal suit with anything. And it's not as bad as black because black is so dark. You really can't pair lighter colors with it. 
I think for a charcoal suit, you could probably get away with a lighter toned or a lighter tinted uh, bow tie color, and, and you'd probably be all right. You know, maybe check out, you know, if, if you're going down our list here, maybe, you know, probably na- navy looks good with everything. Walnut bow tie to add more of like a brown. If it's like fall, eggplant I like. Again, fall, midnight green is a color that I've, I've started to get into a lot. Now, if we're moving on to a bow tie with a navy suit, navy is probably going to be your second suit in your closet, first being like a charcoal, second being navy. Navy, again, just goes with everything. It could be used in a million different scenarios. Um, the great thing about navy is you can really pair it with brighter colors, and you'd probably be even in a better situation than you are with charcoal or black just because it's navy. It, again, it goes with everything. It's it's basically a, it's a blue. I, again, you can, you can pair it with anything. And In my shirt list here, I have burgundy, crimson red, black, pink, and mint green. I love green and blue. I think those are really good colors. Red and blue are also really great. Black could be cool if you really want to do something a little bit more toned down, but still look very trendy. A black bow tie with a navy a navy suit could be really cool. I think something uh, a lot of guys are a little afraid to wear black with anything other than a black suit. But I think it's really grown on me, honestly. A black bow tie with like a gray jacket could even look pretty cool, as we're about to mention. Um, so gray suits, I think that a lot of people have a gray suit. Might be their third suit they ever buy. Uh, in our picture here, we have a gray window pane suit with a black tartan uh, jacquard bow tie here. It looks damn good. I, I Again, I, black and gray are really growing on me. Black and navy are growing on me. I would say, again, gray being neutral color compared to pretty much every single color except gray. I would just shudder the thought. If you pair a gray suit with a gray bow tie, are you? what are you trying to say? Literally, are you? what are you trying to do with that? If, if you see a guy doing that, just ask him the question. Like, what was you? What were you thinking when you did that? Because you must have just been really bored or dull or having a rough day. You're like, ah, the gray with the bow tie. You know, it's just like, man, how dull and lifeless do you want to look? Pair a gray bow tie with a gray suit, and on top of that, throw a white shirt on it. Why don't you? Um, so don't do that. If if anybody's wondering, don't do that. Maybe like a flamingo pink or a lavender bow tie, baby blue, um, burgundy brown. All these colors work. Gray is such a neutral color; it could go with virtually anything. Um, we're going to move on to suit fabric types here. Suit fabrics. Now, basically you have three main fabric types. Um, and of these fabric types, you have like subtypes. So first type wool, wool is going to be the main suit that exists in the world. It is the most plentiful. It pretty much is all season. It's, uh, it's going to be what you probably have in your closet right now. Now, second being cotton, third being linen. Cotton and linen are both summer suits. Um, wool is, again, more of an all-season suit. <clears throat> and wool can be woven in a number of different ways, producing flannel, tweed, cashmere, or uh, blended with other fabrics, such as polyester or silk or really anything. Again, it depends on the manufacturer's preference and different styles of different folks. Um, now, I'd recommend, uh, really, I would say bow ties and fabrics don't necessarily matter it really just comes down to preference in the season. You know, if it's if it's the summer and you really want to, you know, look stylish with a bow tie, try to go for cotton. Get a cotton suit, get a seersucker suit, and, you know, pair it with, like, I don't know, um, a silk bow tie. I'd probably pair a cotton suit with a silk bow tie, but that could be a, a, an option, you know. For wool, any bow tie fabric will match well with a wool suit. Just be mindful of the occasion. Anything other than silk will, will be deemed informal. And th- think cotton, denim, wool. These are all types of informal bow tie fabrics. Just something to be aware of. If, you, if you're interested in learning more about um, wool and different suit fabric types, cut a couple of links here. Tweed, uh, suit history, flannel suit information, and what is worsted wool. Worsted wool is basically what, again, most of your suits are made out of. Um, if you ever looked inside your suit, you're going to have a number. Most of the times, uh, it'll say Super 100. That's a diff- That's a type of suit. Um, generally, the higher the number, the finer and more tighter the fa- the the tighter the twist of the of the wool. So the higher the number, the lighter the suit. The lower the number, the the heavier the suit. I have a couple uh, Super One Hundreds that are really durable and they'll last for a long time and they'll be tough to wrinkle. Now, 120, 130, 40, 50, going up to all the way 200. These things are getting more and more light. Probably once a month type suits. The higher you go. They're going to wrinkle easily, and your your wallet's going to take a beating if you get more than uh, more than a couple of those suits. So, 
just to be aware of that. Another cotton, another type of fabric. We got, we got cotton and we got linen down here. These two types of suits are definitely summer types. Um, that's when you wear them. Wool is not, again, wool does not crease easily. Cotton does. So does linen. These things, they bend, they, they break. They are not uh, your most durable suits. Definitely the lighter of the, 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 of the you know, three, I should say. Any bow tie fabric will work with cotton. Uh, I would avoid cotton as a combination, cotton on cotton. I would avoid it. I would not necessarily say it's never can be done, but you know you want to switch it up. You want to contrast your, your fabrics of your bow tie. If you got a cotton suit, maybe go silk bow tie. If you got, I'm sure you got many silk bow ties, but if you got a cotton suit, maybe go denim bow tie. You know, just switch it up, change it up. And by 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 the way, never ever match a seersucker suit with a seersucker bow tie. It's like rule number one in seersucker world. So just if you're curious, don't do it. Similar to cotton linens, also creases rather easily. Like I mentioned, warning: if you're in the market for a linen suit, be sure lean the heavier weight. Linen tends to be very light, and it'll break down and it'll lose its shape. Like we were mentioning earlier, types of suit creation methods like fused half canvas canvas um fused tends to lose its shape because it breaks down the glue unwinds same similar with linen it it, it kind of just breaks down you know it just it loses its shape um the lapels it just doesn't look good you know just just be aware of that heavier suit uh will last you longer now there are other suits out there like polyester silk these suits exist polyester if you ever are looking for a suit and you come across a polyester suit, just be careful because it's probably a cheap suit, quite honestly. Polyester tends to be very shiny, and it just gives off that not-so-quality um, look, so just be aware. And silk, you probably don't own any silk suits. They're very expensive. Um, I wouldn't recommend one either unless you got the money to blow for like a once-a-year once suit, really. And that's pretty much it, guys. That is the uh, definitive guide to wearing a bow tie with a suit. I hope I answered a couple questions. I'm sure I created a few more. But if you have anything, any questions, any concerns, any thoughts, you know, just leave a comment down below. Uh, feel free to share this post, like this video. It helps uh, helps our brand grow, helps the channel grow, gets this out to more bow tie guys. Because again, that's the whole point of all this, right? Is to uh, spread the word, get more people wearing bow ties and looking. At the end of the day, looking really good. You know, let's be honest. You wear a bow tie, you're going to look damn good. If you're this guide and uh, you take some of the highlights off of it, you're going to look damn good and you're going you're gonna to make other people want to wear a bow tie. And that is the name of the game, right? If you didn't want to listen to anything I just said and you wanted to skip through and maybe you heard the video but don't want to actually read the article, I have a cliff notes section all the way at the bottom here for the highlights. So I'd recommend that. And that's pretty much it, guys. I'll let you go. Enjoy the rest of your day and... Uh, Talk to you soon. Bye.